The M79 grenade launcher. It has been in service since 1961, used around the world in almost 50 countries. It's historically best known for its use in the Vietnam War, but has been used in conflicts around the world to date, including being used by police as a crowd control weapon. God damn, I love working on American soil, Dan. In the movies, this weapon has become an icon in the action genre, used by Tommy Lee Jones, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Chuck Norris, and Ronald Lee Ermey, just to name a few. So let's take a look at the history of this weapon, how it was used, and highlight some of the movies it's been featured in, for better or worse. Before the M79, the best option for firing a grenade beyond throwing range was by using a rifle grenade, which was less accurate but more portable than a mortar. After fighting in the rugged terrain of Korea, the army wanted something that was more mobile than a mortar or rocket launcher and more accurate than a rifle grenade. The portable firepower provided by the M79 grenade launcher would prove highly effective in jungle terrain of the Vietnam War. All right, I want these troops patched up and back out on the line. ASAP. You're hit. You're bleeding, man. I ain't got time to bleed. Originally, the Army wanted a grenade launcher that could fire multiple shots before being reloaded, but these designs proved to be generally unreliable. In 1960, the simple design of the M79 was the winning grenade launcher, due to its ease of use and reliability, coupled with an excellent new low-velocity grenade. In the field, it was well liked by the soldiers who relied on it, often dubbed the platoon leader's artillery. It was also called the thumper or thump gun. You're a PFC, you got it? Now you're staying here, give me the thump gun. Users of the thump gun found it and the grenades portable. The weapon only weighed 6.45 pounds or 2.93 kilograms loaded, and it was only 28.8 inches or 74 centimeters long. The recoil is surprisingly light on the weapon, and some soldiers chose to cut down the stock and or barrel to make the thumper even more portable. Swim! Swim, Dad! At the onset of the Vietnam War, the M79 was quickly put into action. The M79 shows up in the majority of Vietnam movies as a staple weapon, and it truly was, present to both Marine and Army squads. It was also liked by the Air Cavalry, as well as the Airborne. The main drawback of the weapon was obviously its single-shot use. Though the action of reloading was relatively simple, and the grenades were worn for ease of reach, the weapon rate of fire was entirely dependent on the speed of the loader. The Navy, for example, found this rate of fire problematic for their SEAL teams and they used the China Lake grenade launcher, but they were made in extremely limited quantity. The army continued to appreciate the simple design of the M97. The thump sound, by the way, in T2, is actually the sound the gun makes when being fired, not loaded. Targets in the open, as well as concealed targets, can be defeated because of the area coverage which an airburst munition provides. The second issue with the M79, though this arguably saved more lives than it jeopardized, was the safety minimum arming range of the grenades. Almost all modern grenades fired from grenade launchers have a minimum arming range. This minimum range meant carrying an M79 could be a major disadvantage in close range fighting, such as in jungle or urban settings. An M79 user had two options in close combat. Shoot the enemy using the grenade as a sort of bullet, as similar to shown here in the Watchmen, or draw a sidearm, which most M79 users were equipped with. Alternatively, some soldiers carried rifles as well. The M79 fired a sizable grenade at 76 meters, or 247 feet a second, which can prove deadly. Hi, boys. 
Most M79 grenades require 30 meters to arm. This is often overlooked on film for a dramatic and fantastic scene. One of the most incredible true stories surrounding the M79 on film is from Casualties of War from 1989, which is based on a true event. Michael J. Fox playing the protagonist carries an M79 for the entirety of the film. The scene where Michael J. Fox shoots a grenade out of midair with his M79 is also based on a true event. Despite this being a Michael J. Fox film, this is a heavy war drama and well worth watching. Between 1961 and 1971, 350,000 of these cheap, reliable grenade launchers were produced. Everything about this weapon is simple. The stock was either wood or fiberglass. It had five major parts, a receiver group, fore-end assembly, barrel group, stock and side assembly. Front sight is fixed with the rear folding ladder sight, which acted as a fixed sight when folded at close range. Those comfortable with the weapon found it could be accurate from the hip. The weapon had an impressive maximum range of around 400 meters, or 435 yards. Loading and unloading the M79 is as simple as most breech-loading shotguns, from which it was inspired, and it was expected that every man in a platoon would be able to operate this weapon. Ammunition for the weapon varied. On film, you'll definitely see creative uses for the weapon, used to propel a grappling hook, fire science fiction ammunition, or colored smoke, a function it did actually perform. Excellent. In Vietnam, the typical 40mm shell was a high explosive, which produced around 300 fragments in a lethal radius of 5 meters. It was actually the advancement of these grenades that the whole M79 was built around. The grenades using what was called a high-low propulsion system, which kept the recoil low for their size. These rounds were both reliable and cheap to manufacture. Outside of the military, the M79 became a popular tool amongst police forces around the world, firing crowd control non-lethal ammunition. Non-lethal rounds could either be CS gas, or rubber, or sponge grenades designed to disable. Rubber ammunition, however, has been a source of controversy in recent times, as it can still be rather deadly. There were some close-range options for ammunition with the M79, which included flechette and buckshot rounds, but the M79 was not designed for the higher pressures of shotgun-like ammunition. Ultimately, rifles would be married to grenade launchers successfully in 1969 with the standardization of the M203, which could be mounted underneath an M16. The M203 allowed a grenadier to function as a rifleman as well. Knock, knock. Alright, I'm Johnny. Thanks for watching this brief on both a real world and Hollywood classic weapon. If you have any experience with such weapons, please share in the comments section below. And I hope to see you in the next video. The projectile impacted at the corner of the building. The lethal fragments covered the area between the buildings.